1986, this band was coming off one of the best songs of the 80s, which went to the top 10 on both sides of the Atlantic, and it came from a double platinum album. The trick now for this band was figuring out how to do it again. The struggle for every musician, right? Repeating success in the 80s, wonderland of blissful and magnetic rock and pop spectacles is not an easy feat. Fortunately, this band, they were up to the task coming up with a song that nearly matched its success in America and actually bettered it everywhere else, including going to number one in five other countries. Coming up next, the co-founding member of this 80s band shares the in-depth story of this undeniable 1987 hit that you may have forgotten about, but you're gonna be delighted to rediscover. Coming up on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, professor of rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. We interview the great artists of the rock and roll era, and you never know uh, what's in store from day to day, who we're going to have. Make sure to subscribe below so that you don't ever miss out. The 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, best of the songs, best of the music, and make sure to check us out on Patreon. So I'm excited to bring you yet another episode from our series, Revelations, where featured artists go deep on their greatest songs and albums. You know, several months ago, we had an amazing breakdown of one of my favorite songs ever, Something About You by Level 42's Mike Lindup. And he played us the song parts, uh, part by part, and he explained the recording and the makeup of the song, and it was amazing. If you saw that, you're going to want to see this. This is part two. Uh, on this installment of Revelations, Mike Lindup takes us through Level 42's follow-up to Something About You, Lessons in Love. It was a single that was released right after, and it had an immediate impact going to the charts in about every part of the world. It hit number 12 here in the States. It should have been a top 10 easily, uh, but it went to number three in the UK, it went to number one in Spain, in Sweden, in South Africa, and uh, Germany, and Finland as well. Top 10 everywhere else. <laughs> Lessons in Love is a hidden gem of the 80s that you just don't hear nearly as often anymore. But it's as good as anything that came out from that wonderful year of 87. And it's one that you'll just appreciate so much more after this story and this breakdown, this musical walkthrough from Mike Lindup. You're going to find yourself adding it to your, your playlist or wanting to go buy the record. So here it is. As we get into this interview, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. Favorite glasses ever. You'll want to go to zenny.com and design your own. You can do a virtual 3D try-on to see exactly how you look before you buy. Again, that's zenny.com. Here's Mike Lind up with the story. Lessons in Love, another phenomenal song. Big hit in America, number one in eight countries, including Germany, South Africa, Switzerland, Spain, um, number two in the Netherlands, Italy, Sweden, number three in the UK, number 12 in the Billboard Hot 100. Much bigger than his chart position. And uh, introduced just recently to a new generation in the movie, Blinded by the Light. Traps like us, baby, we were born to run. Uh-huh. I haven't seen it yet, actually. I must get round to it. I love how they use it, and they use several songs in it to place you in the moment that's going on in the 80s. And it's mm. great how they use it. Great tip of the hat to level 42. Mm. So tell me about Lessons in Love, and if you... If you, the spirit moves you, man, show me <laughs> kind of on the keyboards and, and just how you started to arrange that and put it together as a band. Yeah, well, um, um, what had happened is that Will Machine had come out and had done really well, you know, here and was doing well in America. It was like, you know, our contract was one album and one tour, and I think this was our contract had been renegotiated, and so. The next album, which was, of course, the Running in the Family album, was not due for a while. And there was a sort of gap between the last single from World Machine and the first single that would come from the Running in the Family album. And Polydor said, we kind of need a single now. 
because you know things are starting to pick up in america and it's going really well in europe and to keep the momentum it would be great have you got another song and so we went into the studio and worked on three different songs we worked on lessons in love children say and a song called freedom someday which was a sort of bonus track on the running the family album in the end but we kind of were sort of hedging our bets saying okay let's let's work on a few songs because we don't know which one will be the one that you know becomes a single and mark had I'd done a lot of the writing on Lessons in Love and he'd worked with Wally again. I think Wally had come up with the sort of chorus sequence. Um, you know, Mark, Mark had written this, the... That was Mark, and it was um, Wally. hear Wally going in. That was kind of, I think, he came up with that with Mark. So they presented the demo of that. And uh, so I kind of learnt it. And um, to be honest, I wasn't too keen on it when I first heard it. I just, it just didn't kind of grab me, um, you know, from a, a, a musical composition point of view. And, you know, this is again, before the words, it was just like melodies. And I remember Mark sort of coming around the piano and saying, you know, listen, this 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 could be a good song, um, you know, trust me. <laughs> so uh, I sort of, okay. And uh, so like we worked on that. We worked on Children's Say and Freedom Someday. And uh, um, I think part of the, the, the change was that uh, Mark had got hold of this amazing drum programming machine called a Lin 9000, which was, you know, kind of like, the howl of, of, of drum machines. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. It was a sequence to, built into a drum machine, um, you know, with, you know, kind of at the time, fairly state-of-the-art sounds and the fact that you could sample your own drum sounds. And so, you know, Phil was able to you know, put a drum track and we were able to take his snare drum and stick it in the Lin and program it. There was this kind of like perfect drum beat. You know, this is, we're talking about the eighties where, you know, this became a kind of a style and a fashion that we aspire to. There's this kind of like, you know, almost metronomic, perfectly in time thing. But in order to kind of give it the groove, Phil then went back in the studio and, and kind of played some hi-hat live and a few skip beats on his snare, which mixed in with the snare that, of his that was already in the Lin machine. Kind of gave it this sort of feel and he played a few fills and the cymbal crashes and so So it was kind of hybrid. Lessons in love. But this was, this was a kind of new thing because the world machine was all played live. So this is the first time we'd sort of worked with programming. And so it was a kind of, it was a bit awkward, a bit like, are we sure we we're doing the right thing? Is this, is this really going to be us in, in terms of how it sounds? And, uh, you know, uh, Wally came up with some amazing swelling keyboards. We never in, and then Boone again came in with these lyrics and, uh, what was interesting was that we were recording in Maison Rouge in Studio 2 and Emerson Lake and Powell were in Studio 1 uh, recording an album that was, you know, a lot of music from the Planets suite that had been re-orchestrated, if you like. So we were kind of hanging out in the bar and chatting and... Um, uh, you know, they'd invited us in to hear what they were up to. And I mean, I was I was a massive fan of ELP when I was, you know, young. They were one of my big, you know, inspirations, really, as a keyboard player, Keith Emerson, particularly. And 
Greg Lake's voice and so on. Anyway, Boone came up with these lyrics and so we started to put them down. And again, it's very similar to something about you. It was when the lyrics went on that suddenly the song kind of went, wow. And we put the harmonies on and uh, God, this sounds amazing. Quick, let's invite ELP in and, and, you know, I think Greg came in. I don't know if Keith came in and I don't think Cozy Powell came in, um, but um, a couple of them were in there. Anyway, they kind of listened to it and we played it and, you know, what do you think? Oh, yes, it sounds great. But then you should hear our stuff. And I think it was at that point that we went in to hear what they were up to and so on. And uh, But yeah, it was, it, again, it was, it, was, it was the lyrics and the vocals that really took it up to another level. And then, you know, on the top, on the back of that, then the extra keyboard sounds were added and Wally did his magic and then Boone did the guitar solo. You know, really, really great and melodic and um, you know, double tracked, of course. I love that guitar solo. Yeah, it's a really great solo. And, you know, and we also, we did some work on Children's Say and we did some work on Freedom Someday. And then we, you know, got a guy from the record company to come in and, you know, which, what do you think, guys? We think it's Lessons in Love, but, you know, we're not going to say that. You you say what you think and it was like yeah obviously lessons in love great and so that came out you know before we'd gone in to do the rest of the running the family album and i must give a big shout out to to holland because you've mentioned you know our success in holland holland was the first place that we were successful before anywhere else in the world before the uk you know they'd taken love games and had gone top five that first level 40 down 42 album had gone gold and you know, to this day, we play so many shows in Holland more than any other European country because we, you know, they they seem to have taken us to their hearts and we've stayed there and we stayed there as the guys have grown older and introduced it to their kids and so on. You know, with our last two, I think we did something like 11 or 12 dates in Holland and it's a small country. So um, I just have to throw that in there. I know there's a lot of areas for bands that pockets of things that happen that really bring about so much success. And it's great to notice those places. Mm. For me, something about you is a definitive song. And Lessons in Love, I, I liked as a, as a kid, but I've really grown to appreciate it as an adult, as I've grown, and how meticulous those parts are for a pop song. And the yeah. harmonies... It's a very unique harmony, the way you guys do it on there, when you, you can kind of go into the chorus. There are a lot of, yeah, we use a lot of six, so it's it. So there are a lot of six in the harmonies, and, and uh, I think that's part of what gives it its flavour. Um, and you know, we we you know we kind of spent a long, quite quite a while on it, and uh, and I think we were you know by then we had you know we were all forty eight tracks, so it's kind of like wow, we got all of these tracks, so let's let's stack up the vocals. Um, I mean, again, you know, net, have the unlimited unlimited tracks and maybe too many of but uh yeah it was it was you know i'm i'm that has a kind of distinctive sound um and especially the intro because i mean the intro is basically just a little link between the end of the chorus and into the the, the sort of middle eight which i sing you know wally had his sing clavier with him and he was able to get these big sort of digital vocal sounds and then that layered with the sort of guitar chords and kind of blend together to make a, a, a sound that is neither one thing or the other um, and so as a production thing uh, you know I'm sort of quite proud of, of that as it were because it's, it's like you hear the beginning of it and, and it's like you know exactly 
you know, within a second of what's coming. Pop complexities. I like that because it's challenging to a listener. Still a very catchy song, but there's so many layers to it that uh, it's really a, a feast for the ears. Love it. And it works really well with the, now when we go on stage, we have uh, three brass players. You know, we've always had, always had a sax player pretty much since, you know, 83. But now we have trumpet and trombone. And uh, they add an extra, you know, a real dimension of dynamics live on stage. And of course, you know, this brass line, which is kind of, we used to do a lot of synth brass. Um, we didn't often use real brass because that was kind of part of our sound was to, you know, be kind of pioneers with the Prophet 5 and, and the whole synth thing. Uh, but the... Uh, you know, that just is just down to a T. And, and, you know, our guys, they kind of make up their own choreography and, uh, and we sort of have a breakout section at the end now where they just start marching around the stage playing that riff. And then Mark joins them and Nathan, Mark's brother on guitar, joins them and they kind of snake around me and the drummer who have to kind of stay in place and uh, it's a really fun song now to play live hey thanks so much for watching leave us a comment about level 42 and this beautiful this magnetic song from 1987 what are your memories of this time in music one of the best years in music history to get more of this interview and others make sure to click on our patreon link below and make sure to subscribe below so that you can join our community. We'd love to have you. Till next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Mm -hmm.